Good morning, students. Now, our lesson today is migration from inundated areas. And I would like to expound a little on migration. Now, what do you understand about the term, of the term migration? What does migration mean? Kyle, go ahead. Migration is when you move to a place that you, move from a place that you once lived to somewhere new. What are some reasons for migration? Have you ever heard about people migrating? Do Belizeans migrate? Not really? Do we migrate? Quite a lot of Belizeans have migrated. Um, what are some reasons for people migrating? Irma. Because of loss of home. Thank you, Irma. Very good. People would lose their homes, and so they need to migrate. Um, let's hear from Kyle. What is another reason for migration? Some people migrate because of the conditions of their country. The like con for, for example, in China, because they are overpopulated. Overpopulation, which is another effect of climate change that you will be hearing about as we go along. Very good. So overpopulation, quite a lot of them from Asia moving down to Belize and because they want a little bit more out of their life, they want um, more, they, they're looking for advantages, they're looking for things that would, would make their life better. And we have examples of those in Belize where we see the Asian people, the um, immigrants coming into Belize and really do, making a big success in their, um, of their lives. One more reason for migration, go ahead. Erwin. Um, majority of the people migrate because of poverty. Poverty. Um, they move to a better country where there are more opportuni opportunities than in their own country. Okay, thank you. He said many people would migrate because of poverty. I'll give you a scenario. Let's say that we had a hurricane disaster in Belize. If we fit people into classes about, um, let's say, their socioeconomic, um, relating to their socioeconomic background, who are those people who would migrate first, let's say from Belize? If we had a situation of a hurricane like 1961, that Hattie, we had Hattie hurricane in Belize, quite a number of people migrated to the United States, who would be the first group of people to migrate, do you think? Carl? I would say the first people to migrate will be, will be the people that has the money to move. Like how, many, how many of you agree with that? And I agree with that also, okay? But now I go back to Erwin's statement. He said that poor people will migrate. Do poor people migrate sometimes? Yes. Or do they migrate? Yes. Sometimes there's no choice but taking them out of that really terrible situation and placing them in another area where they can be, they can be taken care of, all right? So it does occur. Um, and I, if I go back to 1961 Hattie hurricane, the, many of our, um, of our family members who live now in the United States. They were the ones who could have afforded a plane ticket or to catch the buses to reach the United States, whether that was, by, um, whether that was done legally or illegally. Okay? And many of them, they went because they wanted to provide a better opportunity or a better future for their other family members. Right? Inundated areas. Let's clarify what that means. What do we, do you understand um, what inundated means? Daisy, first. What do you think inundated would mean? Inundated. Migration from inundated areas. Um, I would say inundated means that areas that are being flooding. Let's hear what Erwin has, um, Edwin has to say. I think it means an era with very poor infrastructure and vulnerable to, to disasters. Okay. Yes, a part of that. But they say hit it on the nail. It, it means 
flooded areas okay and flooded areas go along with what you say poor infrastructure those can we we have the effects of um, flooded areas so today we're talking about migration from flooded areas has that ever happened in Belize yes. when every year I hear every year do you think it has happened that people had to actually move out of Belize because of flood and never return they could not go back to that area for years has that ever occurred to that aim um, to that level in Belize or to that extent not sure not yet but we do move out and then return is not so yes so you all agree with that and I agree with you let's begin then to understand migration we must go back again to the first theme global warming global warming is the rise in the average temperature of Earth's atmosphere we have been discussing global warming and temperature rising of our Earth's atmosphere and oceans the rising of the temperature in our in our caribbean sea in other oceans since the late 19th century and its projected continuation what does it mean projected continuation go at it um edwin explain it i think that um projected continuation means a continuous rise in in the warming Thank of the you. earth's atmosphere a continuous occurrence a continuous rise it is projected it is it is seen in the future it is viewed that it will continue all right since the early 20th century earth's mean surface temperatures meaning the average of this temperature has increased by 0 0.8 degrees celsius or 1.4 degrees fahrenheit so it says that 1.4 how much do we need to stay alive? How far away are we from that? One. Point one. Isn't that alarming? Yes. Do we want it over 1.5? And won't we want to keep it at 1.4? But because of, because of all of the things and the occurrences, all of the, the, the things that we do in the way we live, that 1.4 is actually increasing with two-thirds of the increasing occurring since 1980 alarming since 1980 how many years ago 1980 32 years ago much more has happened in global warming just before um maybe when your parents were were children this all this really became terrible right and along with that we learned all about the ozone layer being depleted okay warming of the climate system is unequivocal meaning it is for certain it is certain that we have warming that's not a question and we have seen all the proof of that over all the lessons that we have been learning and scientists are, are more than 90% certain that it is primarily increased, caused by increasing concentrations of, let's say that word together, greenhouse gases. The other underlying word there is deforestation. And the third one is fossil fuels. These have been causing all the global warming. These findings are recognized by the National Science Academies of all major industrialized nations. And that's the reason why we have all of the meetings and all of the um, conferences, because now these industrialized countries are realizing that they have made a great, um, they, are the, they actually are causes of the global warming and now which affects more of the developing country like our country and now they must do something to make it better right now 
flooding we're talking about inundated areas what is flooding flooding is when the water level in a creek river or lake or the sea rises and covers land that is usually dry and that's something as as you said we experience in belize dry areas after a heavy shower of rain we may see the streets of belize all covered in water that's flooding we will learn that there are different levels of flooding while some floods occur without problem others are very devastating they cause large-scale destruction and they have significant effect on loss of lives flooding is experienced all over the world and in some countries such as bangladesh flooding occurs regularly um, just take a, a guess at it why do you think bangladesh which is in um, south asia where do you think bangladesh would be um, a place that it that it that floods a lot what would bring on floods erwin it is possibly a low-lying area it's possibly a low-lying area very good a low-lying area and possibly mainly what what would bring flood rain heavy rains okay heavy rains causes of floods floods are often deadly what does it mean by they're deadly Yadira, help me again, please. They can contribute to a huge loss of life. Contribute to huge losses of life. Very good. All right. Damaging and devastating. They kill lots of people, like what Yadira said. They damage houses and crops and cause extensive destruction. In broader terms, floods are of two types. We have what is called natural floods and catastrophic floods. Let's um, look at natural floods. What would be natural floods? Anna? Natural disasters. Natural disasters. Thank you. Catastrophic floods. What would um, determine a catastrophic flood over a natural flood? What would be catastrophic flood? Erwin? Um, well, catastrophic will go like... Let's say there's a dam on the river and a town is here and the dam breaks, all the Very water good. will flush out. Very good. Floods are also caused due to heavy snow melting. Global temperature is rising due to global warming. The rising temperature makes the snow caps melt faster. We had a very good explanation of that by Dr. Lester last week. Continuous and fast melting snow raises the level of oceanic water, which consequently raises the level of water in rivers. And when the level of water in a river rises above the river bank, it causes flood. Generally, floods occur more in the low lying areas or the area below sea level. Which part of Belize? is more prone to flood low lying level Kyle I think it would be the city Belize city yes it is said that we're on the sea where we are under the sea level one of the main reasons is that rivers flow slowly in this area so where you have the low lying area you'll have a river flowing much slower the volume of water increases in the low-lying areas. It has time to build up. As it flows easily, it has time. It has the time to, um, to, to, to get higher. When the level of water rises in these regions, naturally it causes um, floods. Human causes of floods. Do you believe we cause floods? Yes. All over deforestation deforestation is one of the major causes of flood all we learned about the pine forests okay trees are being cleared fast from large areas and as a result soil is easily eroded and the eroded soil gets settled at the bottom of the rivers and the seas and what do we call that siltation river siltation 
which raises the level of water in rivers and seas, which consequently causes floods. Catastrophic floods are caused by um, the overflow of dams. Yes, quite so. Sometimes floods are caused due to poor dams that cannot hold great volume of water and they give up causing floods in adjoining areas. So you would find that that water comes down the river and maybe even flood an entire um, city. Here is a picture of a flood being caused by the overflow of a dam. The Philippines, on the, on the 9th of July, 2012, this flood happened. Um, the Philippines is said to have about seven, a group of 7,000 islands and they have um, the dams and there's a um, because of the rain that they get there's a lot of overflow so this was caused by the overflow of a dam natural floods and these are caused naturally by the overflow of huge volume of waters and as one student said usually by a natural disaster we have what is called the riverine floods those are actually river floods. We have the estuarine floods. Estuarine would be that area where you have the sea and the river meeting, the mouth of the river meeting there with the sea. And then you have the coastal floods. These are more common disasters. Usually these are caused by hurricanes like in Belize. It would be tsunamis and cyclones. Catastrophic floods are mainly linked to dam, the floods that are caused by some significant and unexpected events, for instance, for instance, the dam breakages. These would be caused by heavy rainfalls and they would cause major floods. The level of water in rivers or lakes rises due to heavy rainfalls. When the level of water rises above the river banks or dams, the water starts overflowing, which causes the floods. The water overflows to the area adjoining to the rivers, lakes, or dams, causing floods, floods or what we call deluge. Those will be very severe um, flooding. The flood water causes havoc, meaning a lot of destruction. Great destruction in the areas where it flows. A lot of confusion and a lot of destruction. Floods occur more in the regions that get heavy rainfalls. And one of those areas that we mentioned earlier was Bangladesh, where they, they suffer a lot of floods in their country. Here is um, a dam in Minnesota, actually in the United States of America. It's called Little Falls Dam. And this is an example of a dam overflowing. You can imagine all that water going. You can look at the back of that picture. That it, um, you see some people, you see somebody there looking at what is happening there, and eventually that water can can take over a city. Okay. We can classify floods. We have what we call minor floods that we do experience in Belize. We have serious floods. We have severe floods very severe floods and we have what is called extreme flooding. The media would report about flooding of the road and the traffic being disturbed, being disrupted. Then you have those serious floods that would affect residential areas. You would hear that the water is getting into people's um, home, especially people who may live, um, like for example, in a, in a bungalow house. We have that happening to schools too. Then we have severe floods where it would affect floodings, again, of homes, shops, factories, and you may have some evacuations. Those evacuations may be temporary where people would be able to come back to their places. After a short while, of course, very severe flooding. This would be equal to worse on record extensive flooding of homes, shops, factories, evacuation of many residents and substantial damage to property and facilities millions of dollars being lost in these places and then what we have we also have what we call the extreme flooding this is when the media reports of 
unprecedented damages. This has happened and this is the first time you would hear that this place has experienced such a type of flood and this or such a level of flood and this is happening quite a lot over the world now levels of flooding massive flood damage to property and facilities people don't even want to go back to the areas widespread evacuation of res re residents in life-threatening conditions we have here extreme flooding causes migration this is some history here now the Great Mississippi Flood, 1927. And I felt that this was important to show you what extreme floods can do. The Mississippi River broke. This is in the United States of America. Broke out of its levee. The levee are those um, embankment that they, that they um, build, the bars that they put in front of rivers to keep, uh, um, and to keep away the flooding. Its levee system in 145 places and flooded 27,000 square miles. This water flooded an area of 18 kilometers, 50 miles area was flooded and more than 160 um, kilometers, which was 99 miles long. Can you imagine that type of distance in um, experiencing flood? The area was inundated up to a depth of 30 feet. So you're talking from, from, um, from the ground, you're talking about 30 feet. From the bottom of the ocean, 30 feet up. The flood caused over 400 million in damages, million dollars we're talking about. And, over, and about 246 people in seven states were killed. Extreme flooding again, another example, Mozambique. Southeast Africa, extreme weather as a manifestation of climate change, you hear what it says, is increasingly problematic for the people of Mozambique. So this is what they're living at this time. 2001, 2007, 2008, heavy rains caused flooding along the Zambezi River in central Mozambique. As, as I said, Mozambique is in Africa. The flooding in 2007, which was called Tropical Cyclone Favio, it was just a tropical storm. What they call cyclone, we, we, we normally refer to as hurricanes. Cyclone Favio, it was a tropical storm. Many people were made homeless. Droughts, coastal soil erosion, all of what we've learned about that, that, um, that can happen due to um, temperature rising and we had rising sea levels in Mozambique also which may be connected to climate change also affect a large number of people in Mozambique this is what they're living now the river delta regions and the 2007 kilometers long coastline are at particularly high risk of inundation and erosion here is Mozambique, and from the um, research I did in the article, this was actually said by a child. Under it, it stated, please pray and please consider how you may help. They're asking for help. Here we see the, um, the homes in flood. Here we'll, we see maybe a bigger brother here was trying to rescue um, a smaller person out of the water. And you can see that it is on land because we see all of the, um, the grass behind it. But this is Mozambique also. So it's not just the, the poor who are affected. This, this was the um, devastation. This was also, this is now a, a richer area in Mozambique that was affected also. Flooding again would have been a part of that. And the tropical storm, um, the weather that, that brought with it. Afghan Pakistan. Afghan Pakistan would be people from Afghanistan who become refugees in, in Pakistan. This is also a part of Asia. Um, these people here are being rescued because of the flood. Refugee settlement. Here is a refugee settlement. And here we see people that we, we can call maybe an exodus. We have the movement of people here. It says road to Rio. Rio 
De Janeiro is, a, is um, a large city in Brazil and the people are moving away from their homes and, and they're trying to be rescued so they're on the road to Rio, right? Here is what a typical thing can be when the people, when especially the poorer people, they have to move or they have to be moved. Sometimes this is the way they have to settle, right? And here is Belize. Flooding in Belize. Tropical Depression 16, 2008. Can you um, identify the area of our country here? It, it was taken at, at, uh, um, in a plane, but can you, do you remember anything about um, Tropical Depression 16? It was 2008, it was early in the um, hurricane season. At that time, the, the, um, the storm, it was so early that the storm did not even get its name as yet when it has had some devastating effects on Belize. Anybody here can um, tell me about the second picture there, the one where we have the, um, the road be, being broken there? The Kendall Bridge. Yes, thank you. The Kendall Bridge that was washed away. Um, this was the western, this is, was in, um, in the southern area of Belize. The, the, the fourth picture there is um, showing Saraway. That's, that's a village in the Stan Creek District. Was actually people lost lives in that, in that flood in Belize. Many people had to be evacuated, but it was considered a severe and they could go back to the area. They are living back in their homes. So that was what happened in Belize 2008. A typical thing of flooding. Why people migrate? Now we're, we're talking about migration from inundated areas. So we must consider why people migrate. Um, would you like to give some of your own responses on that? Why would people migrate in the case of floods? What would occur that would make them have to migrate or make choices of migrating? Go ahead, Kyle. Your house will be destroyed. Houses are destroyed. Very good. Waterborne diseases, yes, because of the um, the flood, everything becomes contaminated. The sewage gets into the um, the lines and the water, and we have a whole lot of things happening. And so sometimes it can bring diseases, waterborne diseases. Edwin, you had something to share? Some people don't have insurance, so they would have to find a new place where they can build their house so it doesn't... Very good. Yes, like what we said this morning, due to socioeconomic status, you may find that people cannot afford to build back their homes if it's destroyed. So they, what they would actually do, if the government cannot help, then, then they would, would have to be rescued. And, and like we saw it, where the people living in the tents, all right? Um, construction of dams. Sea level rise, these are the things that cause floods and these are the things that cause people to move away. Change on certain weather patterns. Some people only hear, like we have a lot of discussion about, um, about the change of weather, global warming. You know there are actually people moving away from their countries because they be believe that living in that part of the world they might be the first to be affected. So they don't even want to live in those places that they, are, that they were born. And people would migrate due to weather patterns, due to the changes, and they get scared, or, and it affects them. Flooding as a result of torrential rains in long-lying coastal areas. People would migrate from living beside the coast, um, and they would go inland because they don't, they don't feel comfortable living in coastal areas. Violent natural disasters. You have some places prone to disasters, and so people would say, you know, um, like Belize City would be one that is that live, being by the coast would be more prone to a hurricane. And people would say, um, we don't want to live in Belize City. We might be safer in Belmopan. Wasn't that the idea of Belmopan to be safer, higher grounds? Okay. And a lot of people migrated from Belize City just to feel safer in Belmopan. Eminent danger of losing their lives, property loss, livelihoods loss. They, they lose their livestock, they lose um, their belongings, they lose what they have. Historical heritage and artifacts enclaves loss. 
Let me give an example for this enclave loss here. Let's say, for example, that there was, and God forbids, there was this disaster, this hurricane and, and this flood, and the, where your village was actually washed away, and so the government decided, you know what? For some time, or maybe even permanently, we'd have to move these people out of this village. Now, you're, you're already all used to the way you live, your culture, due to your ethnicity, you have certain things that you do within your village. And now, let's say that you may have to be placed in an area, maybe Stan Creek. You might find, Daisy said, hmm, Daisy said, hmm, okay, maybe that is the place where the government can find the land, can build some homes for you all. Now, what happens there? You lose a lot. You may, you may be a small amount of people, and you may go and live in a wider tongue with, where you find that your, um, you become like isolated in, in that place. You're not even noticed. Your culture is wrong. You, many people have to adapt and learn new cultures because of migration. And that can happen especially when you have to be removed or you have to migrate because of natural disasters. You're lost. You lose what you had, your whole life, ex your whole, all that you had, except your life itself, and now you have to move on. And you go with new people, a new country, or a new place where you have to adapt so many things. That is not easy, okay? That's not easy. Results of migration. It says, locals are inconvenience. Locals are inconvenience. Results of migration. I migrate. I have to take my family to your place to live. Locals are inconvenience. What does it mean when it says locals are inconvenience? Who would be the locals? Go ahead, Stephen. Take a try at it. I think it's the villages. The villagers. Okay. The locals, if you're moving to that place now, you might find those people living in that place, they may be the ones inconvenient. As much as you going in there are inconvenient, they are also inconvenient. Okay? Refugees cannot find suitable jobs in new locations. So you go there, you're being rescued, but maybe you were a teacher in your village, in your hometown, and now you go somewhere else, you might not even be able to get a job. And when we talk about the social impact, we talk about the results. Who are the people you believe will most suffer in, a, in situations like these? Who? Anna, go ahead. Who would suffer? Children. First of all, children. Yes, children would suffer. Why, Anna? Give me one reason why children would suffer. Give, a, give, give an example of how children would suffer then? Children can't really help themselves. Children cannot help themselves. Children have to depend on adults to take care of them. And if your parents cannot take care of themselves at that time, cannot find a job, you may, you may actually end up out of school, not getting your education. Isn't that so? All right? Losing your friends, losing losing a whole lot so children do suffer women suffer more too many times we have um, women suffering okay they're the ones who will have to make that little situation the best we know that the the, the, the mother will try to attend to the family make the family as comfortable as possible and sometimes that cannot happen okay sometimes that's not easy for them the family the family sometimes have to have to be um have to be nurtured by the, by the woman to make sure by that, by that mother to make sure that things that they are a little bit more comfortable and that's not easy in these kind of migration that may occur. Adjustment is difficult. Why? Your educational needs. You may be used to one type of school or you, you're used to the, your school and your, your playground and your area and your area that you grew up and now you're living because of this inundated effect. Now you're living under a tent. Can you ma imagine what kind of adjustment people have to make in their lives? The impact is very, very big. Um, 
inadequate houses we saw people living in tents those are very very inadequate why houses may not be available and they are not appropriate okay definitely not appropriate dwellings measures to take what can we do and how well this morning we're going to do something a little bit more I would say um, we're going to take a stance this morning we're going to stand up we're going to we're going to be the advocates the people that you came here to be you're supposed to when all of this is over you all will continue to share this information you will be pe the people who will remind your your parents and your peers you know don't do this let's do this the, the, um, this way like like what Edwin said he is so um, conscious now he takes care of the lights isn't that so Edwin you make sure that they're turned off so you will be, be the people that will have to advocate for the changes that we need the climate changes that we need and so this morning I want you to make a demand I I want you to stand up and you're going to you're going to be um, giving a response giving your answer but I am appealing to you all it's not just going to be a response it's going to be an expression and so let's continue measures to avoid the effects of flooding what are the measures can you please read number one mitigation and adaptation measures to reduce greenhouse gases can the girls read number two Restore Let's hear the boys now. Plant, 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 plant. Let's hear the girls. Change building practices. Next. Coastal, Coastal defense and ferro concrete walls along the coast. Coastal defenses and ferro concrete walls along the coast. Ferro concrete means they're going to be reinforced concrete. We're going to put it's going to be bars. Things that are strong along the coast. Let's continue. Girls, go ahead. Avoid setting up residence where erosion will be possible. Let's Edu hear it, boys. Educating, Educating the populace who live in areas where inundation of land and fields is possible adaptation. Go ahead. Construct flood resistant roads. Change, Change crops, especially where livelihood depends on the weather and agriculture. Okay, and your demand now, I am demanding of you, I'm appealing to you all, okay? Um, we're going to go around and we're going to use numbers. And each of you will take a minute or two to think about one of, the, um, one of these points given. And you are now going to say how. For example, when we say avoid setting up residence where erosion will be possible, you're going to expound, expound on that a bit and you will say how that can be done. So that's your message. Um, that's your role, that's your part that you will play in this lesson. Construct flood resistant roads. You're going to say how in your own way as students how that can be done change crops especially where livelihood depends on the weather and agriculture how are you thinking yes, so we have one to nine and we're going to um we're going to go back to number one and we're going to go through and you will take time out to write the one that is related to your number and then you will write a short statement to answer that question that asked just now, how? What can be done, but how can it be done? So we're going to do some critical thinking now. Could those people from one to five look quickly and copy? Year one, please. All the one to fives should be writing. Now you have your own message this morning on how. Those who have written their statement, could you now think about it and I would like for you now to do some critical thinking and be prepared to um to give your statement in a very clear distinct well expressed way Okay, 
thinking. Now, I do agree that this will take some critical thinking. Mitigation and adaptation measures to reduce greenhouse gases. And so I ask, how can, how can greenhouse gases be reduced? Number one, any of the number one can answer. Go ahead, answer it. We could try to get people to use more eco-friendly cars to reduce greenhouse gases. One more time. I hear more and then I don't hear the rest. Let's say it like we believe it and we want it to happen. <laughs> Try to get people to use more eco-friendly cars to reduce greenhouse gases. Yes, more eco-friendly cars. And we can go on to make that a whole long lesson about eco-friendly cars. But that's good. Thank you. Number two, restore vegetation. How can this be done? Number two, any of my number two can answer. By saving or restoring vegetation in a proper place where it can't be spoiled or rot. For hurricanes or any emergency. It is for people who can't afford canned food and are poor to afford it. Okay, so yes, you're, you're saying that we need to plant more um, crops, plant more things, plant more food. Is that what you're saying? Okay, could you repeat it one more time for me? Just the first sentence that you did. By saving the, or storing vegetation in a proper place. Storing vegetation in a, in a proper place. What do you mean, what, what do you consider vegetation? Go ahead. Okay, you're talking about plant food, the, the, the plants we use for food. All right, okay. The other number two, would you like to share? For my answer, I said that um, people should restore their vegetation whenever there's a natural disaster. They can use it to distribute it to the people who don't have the food. Well, so you say distributing um, food when there's, um, when there's a disaster. How can we restore vegetation? When we talk about vegetation, what are we actually referring to? Go ahead. Thank you for, for your answers. Okay. Every, everybody's um, input is important. Our vegetation means our forest. So we can, to restore it, we need to um, otherwise build build back our forest so we can start okay. build, uh, we can start planting trees right. um, every every now and then you know we can plant a tree okay. every month or thank every you. two months or something thank you for clarifying there vegetation he mentioned an example of vegetation would be a forest and if the plants that you talk about for food those are a part of the vegetation okay plant mangroves number three how my answer is make clubs to help plant enough mangroves for protection. The, mo the more we plant, the better it is. Make, again, clubs. make clubs. You ma make clubs, meaning that you're going to get a few people together. Very good. All right? And they will, you will have, so you will have your group of people. Very good. And what will they do? Help to plant enough mangroves for so maybe nation. they would they would be attending to some new nurseries right some 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 new uh, mangrove and mangrove areas and see that they they they, they continue to, to grow and they're nurtured and no one goes and interfere with it very good and that's an action that we need number four change building practices how can people change building practices my answer is by not constructing high houses that can be easily broken if you want to construct high houses, use strong materials and in high lands. Very good. We're encouraged to build on stills, but we're encouraged to break, build on stills with strong materials. For example, when we went on that boat and we saw that little house all isolated, seemed like a little, like a little island itself in the, in, this, um, in the middle of the sea, what was our first concern? If there's a strong storm, that house would more than likely be damaged. So that's a how. Very good. Make sure that the houses that are built, that they are built on stilts, but they are well built with strong materials that can endure the strains of, of hurricanes and other natural disasters that come with extreme flooding. Okay? Number five, 
coastal defenses and feral concrete wall along the coast. Building more strong walls along, al along the coast so that silting cannot enter. Okay, her how has to do with silting. Having um, in mind that silting um, affects us. And so, strong walls to avoid silting. Let's hear from our other number five. Sea walls by the beach. Sea walls by the beach. Very good. Very good. Okay? Yes, you will be the people who will advocate and who will make sure that things are done better as you continue to grow and become adults. All right? Now we go to number six. Number six. Avoid setting up residence where erosion will be possible. Go ahead. My answer is before building, you should check the soil and also the surroundings of the land. Building on soil that can easily be eroded will cause a lot of damages that can be very costly. Very good. You are giving some very good answers, but I, I'm still waiting for you to, to, to express so that, so that I know that you all believe and will make sure that these things happen in the future. So, Kyle, could you express yourself again? Okay? Before building, you should check the soil and also the surroundings of the land. Building and soil that can easily be eroded will cause a lot of damages and can be very costly. Yes. A lot of times people build and they do not check soil. We have typical examples of that in Belize City. You will see a lot of beautiful houses that have tilted. Houses had to be evacuated. People had to move out of them. Houses that cost, cost them thousands of dollars. They had to move away from them because this, the proper soil testing and the proper foundations were not, were, were not considered. And so we have examples of those things and no floods. It doesn't have to be an extreme flood. Just severe floods have affected those, those, um, those people, um, those people their, um, their properties. So, um, Kyle, very good. Okay, very good answer. Educating the populace, the people who live in that place, where inundation of lands and fields is possible adaptation. How will you educate them? Number seven. Yes, we can educate them, but we need to take a serious. We need to take some serious steps after that. We can re, we can replace low-lying houses with with higher elevated ones using stilts, and then we can also give them um, adaptation packs, which includes all the materials and supplies needed during floods. Thank you. Very good. Very good. We see. Le I see leaders, and we see leaders coming out of you all. Okay, and in regards to climate change in Belize and for the world. Construct flood resistant roads. Number eight. By constructing high roads with drains on the side to reduce flooding. Drains, drainage, very important. Drainage is very important and in your next lesson you will hear more about the effects of drainage and when we have too much um, too much um, rain, too much flood, and then it cannot be drained away as it should. Where does it go and what's the effect of that? So that lesson is actually coming up. Okay, thank you very much. Change crops, especially where livelihood depends on weather and agriculture. Varieties of agriculture in that era that are very capable of growing on Ad that can adapt to different weather um, situations so that they prosper in that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And one of the things that is actually happening now is where um, the perennial plants, those plants like a mango tree that used to take um, seven years, five years or seven years to, um, to grow into maturity and you can get all your very sweet mangoes. There's another way how the farmers, they plant in a certain way where now they can get that perennial plant to grow in a year or two or three. For example, we have a little farm and on that farm, all the trees are graft trees. Um, the grafted trees now, you can't replant them. You have to go back to science and do certain science to, do, to get that tree to grow again and then you plant a new tree. So you can't take the seed of the pears um, that, we, that we eat 
We can't take that, that pear seed and put it in the soil and get a new tree. But, peop, but farmers are worried about the long endurance to wait for their crops and to wait for these perennial plants to grow. They have to put in a whole lot of money, investment in it. And so they do the grafted trees now. And so those graft trees, they, um, they allow for quick, um, quick nurturing and maturing too. And then now you have, you have some, some food, right? So it's an advantage and it's a disadvantage. But it's all because of weathering and the climate and all those things. You would not want to know that you were taking care of a tree for four years and then the hurricane came and then you didn't get anything out of it. So it's a less risk factor, all right? And there we are, and I just would like to, to, to share the last part here that we do live in a low-lying area. The first one shows Dangriga, Kendall, where um, you see people there when there was a, the washing of the bridge, they had to actually fit there the soil for the transportation to have access to the road. The second one is Placencia. If you notice the sea and land, is on the same level. So you can ima imagine what kind of erosion will happen there if there's a natural disaster of a hurricane. And then you have Dangriga there at the bottom. There's the river there. If we have there again a hurricane, how quickly will that river rise up and meet this, the, um, the road? And then we have floods. And so Belize itself, we have low-lying areas in Belize, okay? That we are also prone to extreme flooding in Belize. So we need to take care of our, our, our land. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to change. We need to um, practice the mitigations and adopt better principles and practices so we can continue to enjoy Dangriga, enjoy Placencia, and we can have our areas to to move around in our country, okay? Thank you.